So if you look at the following question here, uh, the one that we were doing yesterday, they were saying if the tan of beta is this, what is going to be the cos of beta? And then they said we should use an aid of a diagram to do that. And then we also have another question. And then the reason why I'm bringing both questions here, I just wanted us to compare. Here they're saying solve for theta. Here they are saying if we have three cos theta minus two, where theta is an element between zero up until 360. And then here they, they are not saying, I, I wanted to see the difference between the two here. Here they're saying if we have, let's let's say if we simplify, this is going to give us tan beta, which is going to be equal to minus two all over three. Again. They're saying if the tan of beta, this whole thing here, is equal to minus three all over two. Tell us what is going to be the cos of beta, not beta. They don't want to know what is beta. They want to know what is going to be the trigonometric function as a whole. But what I want us to do today, and then they went on to say, okay, but now, Beta is an element from zero up until two seconds. Okay. Here, what are we talking about here? We are not saying, here we're saying, if we are given three, the cos of theta, which is going to be uh, minus two, where theta is an element between zero up until 360. Tell us which, what is going to be, what is going to be this thing here? They want to know what is part here. Let's highlight it so that you will see. We want to know what is this part here. On the previous question, they wanted to know what is going to be the tan of theta. So they wanted to know this whole thing here. What is going to be this whole thing? What is going to be the whole of tan of theta? Now, I don't want to know that. I want to know what is going to be this small thing here, theta. Now, how do you approach this question then? We are supposed to first make sure that we make theta cos of theta the subject, just like what we did in the previous question. So we'll have the cos of theta, which is going to be equal to minus two all over three. We're still fine. Okay. And then they will say theta is an element between zero up until 360 degrees. So I want to get theta. Now, if I want to get theta, I'm going to go with the general solution method. And then we are going to get theta by saying theta is going to be given as the cos arc of two all over three. But you can clearly see it's negative there. Why didn't I write the negative? Mm -hmm. So if we are going to get the angle, this thing here, it's only going to give us the direction. It's just telling us, they are saying, where is cos going to be negative? Where do you suppose cos is going to be negative? Yes. Cos is negative on which quadrant? Second. It's going to be uh, negative on the second quadrant and the what? And then and the third quadrant. So second and third. So when you say negative here, when we type it on our calculator, we're not going to include the negative. The negative is just there to give you direction. Now, for those who are doing physics, they will tell you that we have vectors and scalars. Okay? Vector, it gives you uh, direction and magnitude. Yeah, so when we, when we want to get the size of something, we're only interested in the magnitude, not the direction. So this gives us the direction, so we're going to get the direction first. Where are we going to work? So according to them here, they're saying we are going to work on the second quadrant, and we're also going to work on the third quadrant. Then, let's go and type this in our calculator. How do you type it in our calculator? You say shift, cost, again, and then we have two, all over three. Round it off to two decimal places according to what they said here. They said you should round off your answer to two decimal places. So if you round that off into two decimal places, you get 48,189. Okay? Now we said if you don't know how to round off, you are going to say shift setup. Okay? And then you go to six. And then if it's two decimal, you press two. And then it says that you are going to have 48 comma one degrees. That's your deed. Now, according to what they said, that they are saying our answer shouldn't be on the first quadrant. This is an answer for the first quadrant. We can't accept this answer. We want to know what is going to be theta on the second quadrant and on the what on the on the third quadrant. So for the third quadrant, for the second quadrant, we're going to have, we call this our reference angle. We're going to have 180 degrees minus the ref angle. For the third quadrant, we have 180 degrees plus the ref angle. Here we have 180. 
Here you have zero, and then here you have what? So we're going to start with the second quadrant and say, according to the second quadrant, theta is going to be equaling to 180 degrees minus 48,19. Then you have 180 degrees minus the answer that we got. It says we're going to have 131,81. So this is the first answer that we're going to have. Now we're going to have another answer. This is not the only answer that we have. You're always going to have two answers. Your trig ratio is always going to be positive in two quadrants, negative in two quadrants. So let's go to the third quadrant. According to the third quadrant, we're going to say that theta is going to be from 180 degrees plus our ref angle. Our ref angle is going to be 48,19. And then if you say, 180 degrees plus 48,19. You get what? 228. 228,19 degrees. So these are going to be our two different answers. Guys, what are we looking for here? We are solving for theta. And then how do you see the difference between these two questions? It's clear. Here they're saying solve for theta. Round your, your answer to two decimal places. You are solving for theta. When you solve for theta, you are going to use your calculator. Now, at the same time, we also have the following. Here, if the term of theta is equal to this, determine using an aid of a diagram. They are being specific here. We are not looking for beta here, but we are looking for the cos of beta. We are looking for the whole trigonometric function. Uh, I think we can do the following now. There's a crosswind. 